Boker Tov. Today's staff is that Samach Beis in Ksibas, as we learn for a fourth line for Yosef Israel ben Chaim Michal and Elazar ben Reuma. And uh, so we, we, uh, we wish a, a Elias Neshama for Rumi's father uh, and uh, our uncle, uh, Reb Tzvi ben Chaim Akiva Halevi. May his Neshama have an Aliyah, as Amen. well as another uncle, <coughs> Yaakov Nasan ben Yisrael Shlomo. Amen. Amen. So, amen. so today's daf starts. We'll start with the last uh, few words on Samachal from the Beis. The Mishnah had said that a, a Tamidim are allowed to go out for, to learn Torah, leave their wives. That's the whole discussion over here about frequency of Bia and how often can they leave their wives. And the Tamid are allowed to leave according to our Mishnah uh, for 30 days without even permission. Even if their wives don't consent, for 30 days they have to allow. Allow them. So how much are they allowed to go out with Rishus? If the wives don't allow them, they're still allowed to leave. Listen, they're entitled to leave for 30 days. What happens if they have Rishus? If the women agree, comma, how much Rishus, comma, how much can they go out for? How much can they leave their wives with Rishus, comma? Most is comma the boy, as much as they, they want. If they both agree, what's the issue? But how much is it proper? There are Herod's. A person should, even if he agrees and she agrees and he can convince her that he's got to go learn, What's the proper thing to go away? How long should he be away from his wife? Amarav, Chodesh Khan, Chodesh Bias. One word, one week, one month away, meaning one month in Yeshiva, and one month in the house. And now, as we see, when the people who work for David, it says, the whole Dabar, Hamachlakos, Haba, for all the courses of, of, the, of the jobs that they had, Haba, Vayotz's people came and left. Chodesh, Bachodesh, Lachol Chashesh, on a month, and meaning they, they worked for a month and they came. Home for a month, which is common with people who work far away. Some they go away for a month and they stay home for a month. You see this based on the Pasik in Devei Yaman. That was what the service of Dub was. So that's what Rob says uh, that what's proper to do is a one month home, one month in the yeshiva. Okay. <clears throat> so that's Rob's opinion. Rabbi Yochanan says, uh, one month here in the yeshiva one month away from home, and two months at home. Two months at home, one month away. Two months at home, one month away. Shinemar, Chodesh Yevulavadam, when they came to work in the base of Midrash, it said they assigned 30,000 people in three shifts. One month they were in Lebanon, cutting down the wood, et cetera, and, uh, heart, and uh, quarrying the stone. Shnaim Chodashim Abeso, two months at home. So Barav Nami Mai Temelom Rei, why didn't Rav learn from the case of, why did Rav say one month, one month? Why didn't he say one month, two months? Like we saw by the workers of the Beis Hamikdash in Lebanon, Barav Nami Ma'atem Lo He says, "Shani Binyan Beis Hamikdash Efshar Yecher Binyan Beis Hamikdash." You only you only needed thirty thousand people, and they had three shifts of ten thousand each. So obviously, one month there and two months at home because he had two other shifts. Rabbi Yochum Ma'atem Lo Why don't Rabbi Yochum learn from the case of the regular workers of David Melech? It's a shiny osin to Islay Avocha. There, they were making a profit. When they were making a profit, so you could say you could say that. Um, uh, the women were willing to be without their husbands for half the time, one month home, one month away. But if they're not making a profit when they're learning in the yeshiva, then they want two months at home and only one month away. Amarav. So that was a machlokas rabbin of Yochanan. What is it proper to stay away from one's wife when you're going to learn Torah? How long? A month here, a month there, a month home, a month away, or two months at home and one month away. Another machlokas rabbin of Yochanan. A person who groans and sighs, that breaks half his, half his body, you know, fetching all the time, that, that breaks your body, and it ruins your constitution. You, human being, you will sigh and groan with breaking of your loins, and with bitterness you will sigh, meaning like half the body, at, the loin, at, at your loins, that's the uh, halfway. halfway. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Afkol Gufshalem, the whole body, when, when, you, when you groan inside, your whole body suffers. Shnemar, Vayik Yomar Elecha, when they will tell you, Amo Atanech, why are you, why are you groaning? Vamarta, El Shmua Kiba, because the bad news that came, Benamas Kalev, and melted the entire heart, Barafu, or every person really, Barafu Kol Yadayim, all the hands became weak, feeble, Vechasa Kol Ruach, and every spirit fainted. Um, and every knee ran with water. In other words, the whole body is shot. do with the breaking of the of the loins, mashma half the body. 
when it when the when the pain starts, it starts from the loins, but it goes up and it goes down for the whole body. What does Rav do with the pussy if the whole body falls apart? It says shiny shmu the base migdash. That's different. When they heard the bad news of the base migdash, that it was so severe, so difficult, so sorrowful that to keep it very strong, to keep it very strong, and that destroyed the whole body. Normally, though, groaning and sighing and fetching only uh, wounds half the body. Oh, yes, Rav, there was a story with a Jew and a guy. They were walking the road. They were walking together. But the guy could not keep up with the Jew. The Jew walked fast. The guy couldn't keep up with them. So the, the uh, guy, in, in attempting to slow the Jew down, he figured he will remind him of the important base of Megdush. That will cause him to groan and sigh and weaken his body, and he'll walk slower. So he sighed and he groaned. Still, the guy could not reach him, could not keep up with him. I understand. How are you able to continue walking so fast that I can't keep up with you? Don't you say, don't we say, don't you say that groaning destroys half a person's body, meaning it weakens you, so you should be much weaker. I'm relay, honey milly, honey milly, milsa, the chadadi. That's only some new bad happening that we heard about. Did you hear the terrible news? But something which is old and the news of the base of Mikdash, even though it's severe and destructive and, and it's sorrowful. But it's old news. Uh, the Shanaba is something that we're used to. Shanaba meaning who Shana doesn't mean that it's all Shanaba means that we're used to it already. You know, like it's it's uh, we've heard about it for a long time, like we have now. We're, it's very difficult for us to mourn the base of Mikdash after 2,000 years because we've been mourning it for so long. It's not new, it's not like it just happened. If it just happened, that would be much worse. So uh, uh, but something that we're used to already, not doesn't destroy it as bad. The Armenian mean, people say the Malfi Tichli that a woman who has unfortunately buried, who has a uh, bereavement for uh, children, lo bossa, it doesn't shake her when another child dies, lo aleinu. If another one dies, it's not so much shekvar, the mother's because she's used to it. We don't know these things. We live in a better world. You know, 100 years ago, uh, people in Eastern Europe would have 12 children. They'd be lucky if two or three survived. That's what the mortality rate was in those days without medicine and proper medical care, et cetera. So women, they were used to it already, low a terrible thing. So the Mishnah went on to describe what is the frequency, the, the let's call it the suggested frequency uh, for different people. So we said that Tamachachim could go out of town for 30 days at a time. But what's the normal thing? So Atayolan, people who are men of leisure, they, they're not uh, obligated for different things. Uh, they they could even have Bia every day. My tell what do we mean by men of leisure? Omaraba, Bene Pirka, the people who learn Torah in town, they don't have to go away to a yeshiva hundreds of miles away and come home once in many years to see their family. They have a yeshiva right in town. They go to the base medish and they come home at night. Amalia Baya, that doesn't make sense. Madras, if it says, it's Madras, it says, it says, tell them, lechem mashki mekum. Vain is it for you, you people who get up early in the morning, and stay up at light, you eat the bread of your toil, meaning people who work and don't learn Torah, but Hashem will give his dear ones, meaning the ones who learn Torah, he will give them good reward for keeping away the sleep, meaning that they don't go to sleep, they learn Torah. This refers to the wives of that they brush away sleep from their eyes, meaning they wait up all night for their husbands to come home. They don't come home from yeshiva because they because they wait up for their husbands all the time and they don't go to sleep. Um, they will be zochot to olam haba. So meaning that the people who learn Torah, even local people who learn Torah locally, they don't, they don't come home and, uh, for their wives at night. They're busy learning Torah the whole night. So what do you say that people learn Torah in town they're the ones who are, have beer with their wives all the time. They can have beer every day. They're they're too busy. They're too busy learning. They're not the ones who uh, who learn Torah. So Rashi says, Alma b'shah sheina odav beis rabim. The time they go to sleep, they're still learning Torah. So how can you say that they have time every day for beer? I'll tell you who they mean by the tayelam. When the Mishnah says that the men of leisure 
and at the uh, every day, what are we speaking about? El Amravaya, Kid Rav, the Omar Rav going Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas. Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas was a Malamit and Ochos was a Malamit, and he got paid from the visual people, and he lived at home, and people would send him their students, their children to learn, and they would pay him. The Ochom Day, he eats of his own the Shasmi Day, meaning he's self supporting by having this trade. And he sleeps in the shadow of his palace, meaning he lives a not good life. He doesn't go outside, doesn't go anywhere else. Everybody comes to him. And the messenger of the king, you know, the, the king's officers who come to get to, to enlist people uh, in the army and the, and the working of the, you know, to, to work for the government, they don't bother him because they figure he's not, uh, they don't see him working. They don't see him making a lot of money. He doesn't have fields and things like that. He's very sanua. Very modest, but yet he makes a nice living. A person like that, he is like a man of leisure because he lives at home, he has a good income, and he doesn't have to go away. So a man like him, he could have beer all the time, every day of his life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they did it on Zoom. <laughs> he had it on Zoom in those days, huh? Yeah, no, right, right. That that also, that also. Okay. Kiasa, I hope we didn't hear that. He also Robin, when Robin came from Eretz Omer could go Mafanki the the pampered people in Eretz Yisrael. What does it mean by that? Rashi says, B'nei Eretz Yisrael, Munogam, Amachel, Mishta, they eat, they live a good life. The Kachim Brim, therefore they are healthy, Balikoach, Tashmir, they have the strength. They can be all the time because they eat well, they live well, they're, they're healthy. Rabu Avi, Rabu, so he gives examples of the people in Eretz Yisrael. Rabu Avi Koi, Bebani, he was in a bathhouse. Presumably, we're giving examples of people, strong people in Eretz Israel. Um, he was in a bathhouse. He was supported in the bathhouse by two slaves. Two slaves were helping him. Ifchas Beibani. Beibani collapsed. And with they, in those days, the bathhouse it was like they had a floor. Underneath the floor, they had boiling water uh, with fire. And, you know, that, that, how did they boil the water? With fire, right? They put coals or whatever, wood. And they they boiled the water, and under there, that was like under the floor. The floor collapsed, and they could have all drowned or been burned. But uh, so if uh, they say under his under his um, under his feet, uh, the the floor collapsed. Israel Amuda, but he found he was able to hang on to a pillar. There was a pillar that had been holding up the floor, and Rabavu was strong, and he held on to that pillar. So again, he climbed up the pillar Vaskinu. And he lifted and he brought up the two slaves with him. He was so strong that with one hand, he, he uh, climbed up the pillar. On the other hand, he lifted these two guys. So Rabu was a pretty strong guy. Similarly, Rabbi Yochan, the Kassalic Dog, Rabbi Yochan was once walking up some steps. Uh, some play Ravami, Ravasi, Ravami and Ravasi were supporting him as he was walking up steps. If Chasadarga, the steps collapsed underneath him, to say underneath him. Solik, he went up. Vaskinu, he was able to climb up holding on to something. Vaskinu, and he brought those Ravami and Rasi up with him too. Also, Rabbi also very strong. One hand he used to climb, the other hand he used to hold two fellows and brought them up. Rabbanan, Rabbanan said, If you're so strong, if you're so strong, what do you need people supporting you? Right? You're so strong, what do you need them supporting you? Presumably this went to on Rabbi also. He was so strong. Rabbi Yochanan, who was so strong, he could lift two guys with him as he's climbing up. What did he need them? Amaluim came on sikna. If I use up all my strength now, what am I going to leave for my old age? Conserve some of your energy. You'll need it later on. But Paulim Shtaim Shabbos had said workers. So he said men of leisure every day. Right? That's what he said every day. Men of leisure cannot be able to do that. Paulim workers twice a week. Twice a week is normal. I have a Tanya Pong Ach Shabbos. Another Bryce has said that workers should have the normal amount. The, the, suge- the manufacturer suggested is once a week. If they work at home in their own city or if they work in another city, very simple. If, they were, if they're working at home, then it could be twice a week. If they're working in another city, they have travel, et cetera, the travel wears them out, maybe they're not home all the time. Then they then it's once a week. When is when is their normal conjugal duty uh, twice a week? That's when they're working in their own city. But if they work in another city, then once a week is suffices. So now the, the Mishnah said that um, donkey drivers, ass drivers, that's once a week, right? Once a week. So 
Amalei Rav Archanan Labaya. This is what we're on the last line of the Daf. If Botan Lashmin and Tile Po, I understand here. The for beginning of the Mishnah said that according to Basilo, if a man forswears Bia with his wife, meaning he says that um, the Bia with his wife, he can't dasher that Hano. The Hano of the Tashmish is usher on him, so the netter is chal. If it's up to a week, that's manageable. But if it's over a week, he has to give her a divorce. That's what the Mishnah said. Okay, but wait a minute. When you look at all the cases afterwards, when I said, what is the suggested frequency of Bia? Well, if you're a seafarer, if you're a sailor, once in six months. Right? If, you're, uh, if you uh, are a uh, gamal, you mean you take your, your camels far away for trading, uh, gamalam, once in 30 days. Okay, hamaram, once a week. So what's the problem? You know, what are you, why, what are you telling me this business about? Oh, if you make an editor, make an editor, you're not going to be a, uh, for a week. You already have to give a, uh, if it's more than a week, up to a week is okay. More than a week, you have to give her a get. What do you mean more than a week, you have to give her a get? In most of these cases, the frequency of Tamar Chochem, 30 days, right? You can go away for 30 days at a time. Uh, the other people, a month, uh, 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 six months, right? And, and uh, Paul. And Hamarmi also once a week. Even a Hamar, even a camel, a, a, a donkey driver, once a week. So if he says, I'm not going to be here for a week, what's the big deal? What, what's me more than a week? So more than a week, okay, eight days is no good. Then you have to give her except. So for one day, anyway, it's only once a week. So what do you mean? If you make a netter for once a week, more than once a week, you have to give her a divorce. For one day, you're going to give a divorce. So, so the whole business that, so he says, Ichbal Tana, the Tana went to the trouble, Lashmin and Tayupo. Only the case of the man of leisure, be, be every day in the poem, who is twice a week, only those are the only cases where you have a problem. So we, the, so the mission went to the whole uh, the whole issue of uh, the netter about a week, only for those two kinds of people. The other people anyway don't have to have be a, you know, what's what if a man if a man is going to yeshiva for a month, what happens if he, if he swears to his wife, you know, I'm not going to have beer with you. However, he said it, he made the netter on himself. He can't have an awe for for a week. What's the big deal? It's not, she's, he's not coming home for a month anyway. And the, the sailor's not coming home for six months. And the Gamal's also not coming home for a month. And even the Gamal's coming home after a week, what's the big deal? So it was only for these two cases. I'm going to lay low. <clears throat> Akulu. When, when we said that, that we make a netter, when you make a netter that you're not going to be with wife for a week, even if the guy is a sailor and he went away for six months, that's also a problem. Why? Right? He says, six months. What's the problem? What, what, what's the problem with a netter? I'm not going to be with the wife for a, for a week. He's away for six months anyway. It comes like where, by time as we said that. The person has the bread ready. It's not as bad. You have pasta if you have bread in your bed, in your, with you, you don't feel bad. When you have no food available to you, you, you feel worse. If the food's, even if you're not going to eat it right now, the same thing over here. The sailor's away for six months, but what happens if there was a shipwreck or whatever, they changed their plans and he came home, so he could have beer with her. The fact is he could have beer anytime, just he probably won't be home for six months. So the yeshiva guy probably won't be home for a month. Maybe he will come home. Maybe he'll get a tzavkiyos or something. He'll have to show up or whatever. You know, he might come home in, in the middle. So in Adom Mishra's Paso, when, when he forswears beer with her, then he can't have beer even if he's home. That's worse. That's the idea called So therefore, he makes a shvua. Even if we're talking about a guy who's not going to be home for 30 days yet, but what happens if he shows up? He can't be because of the shvua, because of the netter, and therefore it's chal. And that's the problem. That's why he has to divorce her, according to Beisol, if he makes a netter for more than a week. What happens to this? What happens if she marries a guy who's a donkey driver? Right? What is a donkey driver? He's home, comes home once a week. Right? That's what the Mishnah said. Hamar, because he's on the road the whole week. He comes home, let's say for Shabbos, so it'd be a Friday night. So that's what Hamar is. What's when they get married with that condition? The Nasa Gamal. And now he says, you know, he's moving up. He did very well as a donkey driver. He's moving up to camels now. Camels, he can go for a longer trip, make more money, etc. Can he do that? Can he do that? Uh, he'll make more money now. And does she have to accept that? He said, if he's a camel driver, then um, it's normal once in 30 days. Yeah, but she married a donkey driver thinking that he'd be home once a week. Now it's 30 days. What do you say? Can he can he force that upon her? My Omerlei, a woman would rather have less money, a cop, a small measure, but still have beer with her husband rather than a sarkov and have much more money 
and preaches an abstinence. Doesn't apply to all women, but but uh, but that's what his answer was. Uh, Rabbi Hanna said that's the general answer that no, that he has to ask for permission. Now, if she if she uh, you're talking about without permission, that's what Rashi says. Rashi says that when she married him, he was a donkey driver. Can he become a camel driver without the permission? Would she rather have the profit of making more money? She's not sure. A owner of the divorce, she'd rather be intimate with her husband. So he's a woman would rather be intimate with her husband. Now, if a woman says, I'd rather have the money, <laughs> stay away the whole year. You know what? Just send me a check. Don't come home. You know, uh, if that's what she wants, okay, that's acceptable. They, they both agree. Okay. The Mishnah said that all these various <laughs> frequencies that we talked about was the words of Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Lezer said, the sailor once in six months. That's like the worst of the cases. The other case is different. Tam Chacham, 30 days. So the Mishnah says, it says that and the Mishnah is Divir Rebbe Lezer, but doesn't say who argues with him. It says Divir Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Lezer wouldn't have said that. Amr Abrona, Amr Avalach Rebbe Lezer, he's Lachas like Rebbe Lezer. Amr Avada Barava, Rebbe Lezer says, Lema Rav, Zu Divir Rebbe Lezer, those words are Rebbe Lezer, Ava Chamam, the Cham disagree. They say, Hatsimidim Yotzim, the Tam Torah, Beis Bim Mashan, they can go for years at a time. He says two or three years, meaning there's no there's no real uh, um, limit. Uh, two or three years at a time, shalom b'shus, shalom Even without permission, if that was, the turning Torah is more important, and if they want to learn Torah, that's what the Chum said. Amar Rava, some Chaban Ravada Barav. Ravada Barav said, as apparently we didn't know without Ravada Barav, we didn't know that it's machlo because we just said took the mission. Those were Blazer's words, and we didn't see anybody argue with him. Ravada Barav comes along and says, no, the Chum disagrees and says you could stay away in Yeshiva as long as you want. So the rabbis relied on Ravada Barava to stay in Yeshiva for years at a time. And they 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 uh, did they did halacha lemaisa. They followed that at the risk to their own lives because sometimes staying away from so so long can cause such a disruption in the family. Cause prime kihad the Rabbi Chumi gives a story here. Rabbi Chumi have a kamei the Rabbi. He used to learn in front of Rabbi b'mechuzah in that city. He used to come home once a year, Arab and Kippur. Arab and Kippur was made. His man came once a year, Arab and Kippur. Yumachad, one day was Arab and Kippur. He was busy learning in the morning, and he didn't realize the time flew by. Busy in the sugi, couldn't get out of the sugya. Having Masachia Divisu, and his wife was waiting for him. She kept looking out the window. It's Arab and Kippur usually comes around now, right? Hashtag, see, Hashtag, here he's coming. I'm sure he's coming. Low Austin, he never showed up. Yom Kippur came never show up. Cholish died she felt so bad. Uh, and tears came down from her eyes. At the time that the tears fell down from her eyes, her husband, this Rabbi Humi, was learning on a roof, Bagra, sitting on the roof learning, just getting some sun. If the roof collapsed, me too, safe from underneath him, and he died. And Rabbi Chaim Shlavit says, even though she probably cried more about his death than about his delay, you know, still, that's somehow the punishment when you hurt somebody else, even if you didn't mean to. He didn't mean to hurt her. He was busy learning. The time got the best of him. He didn't have a watch. He was busy learning. The, time, the day went by. He didn't mean to hurt her at all. But he caused her pain. He caused her pain. There's a price to pay. And, and especially the great Rabbanim were held at a, at a higher degree. Uh, you know, they were punished at, with more severity. They were held to a higher, um, you know, to a higher standard. Uh, when should a Tam Chacham be with his wife? Be Usually it's Friday night. That's a proper thing. He gives his fruits at the right time, talking about a, a tzaddik at the beginning of Tilim, right? Uh, the tzaddik is, he gives the fruits at the right time. That's a person who, has to be, who is intimate with his wife. Every Friday night, that's considered the proper time. Yehuda braid Rav Chia. Yehuda was the son of Rav Chia. Chasnei the Rav Yannik, the son of Rav Yannik. He also, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, he went to the yeshiva. But called Be Shimshi, Rav Yosef, he would come home every Friday night. Some say it means every night, but it doesn't. Uh, but Rosh Hashanah says he used to come home every Friday night. But Rav Yosef, whenever he would come, they would see Kame in front of him. Amudu, in other words, be a fiery pillar walking in front, like uh, preceding him. He was such a great tzaddik and rabbi that as he would shum, come home, people would see a fiery pillar preceding him. Yom had one day, he was busy learning and he lost track of the time. 
once they didn't see the fiery pillar, um, right? Um, they didn't see that that sign, that fiery pillar. Omalu Rabiana, the father-in-law, not the father. He was the he was the son of Rabia, the father, the son-in-law of Rabiana. And I said, cuffing Mitaso, turn over his bed. He must have died. Time to sit Shiva. He wouldn't have he wouldn't have missed the the weekly intimacy with his wife, but he wouldn't have been the battle there. Have a but he didn't really die. He was he was just busy learning. We had that before, right? Like a, a mistake that went out from the rule that he said something, like Al Tiftah fell aside, he said something. Well, he must have died, but Nachnaf Shani Taka did die. He died here also because he caused them tsar or whatever, because uh, some of Raviana was a great man too, and he said something, and that caused him to die. Rebbe Yasukle Lebre Be Rafia. Rebbe was marrying off his son. Uh, to a daughter of Achia. So he went to Achia. This is Lashon and Gemara. He always had that. Rough, that he was Asik Lebe, was, was occupied with for his son, marrying off his son in the house of Achia, meaning he was marrying Achia's daughter. They were about to write Aksuba, Nach Nafsha, the Rabisa, the young girl, the, the Kala died. They were about to write the Aksuba, she died. Omar Rebbe, Chas Vachilila Psulika. Is there some soul in this union and this marriage and this Shidduch? I mean, she died like it's a sign from heaven that something's wrong with the Shidduch. Yasibu, they checked into the Ainu, they stay at the Ainu and they checked carefully the Mishpachos, they checked into the Yichas of the families, and they turned out Rebbe Yasim, Rebbe came from Shvatya Ben Abital, who was David's wife. So Rebbe came from David Amelach, as we know, Rebbe Yasim, Mishimi, Mishimi Achidav, and Rebbe came from Shimi, the brother of David. So uh, and they saw that, was, that wasn't the proper shidduch. The way Rashi learns is that Ben David Abital Shemesh Dabra, Rebbe Yasim, Zeu Absul. Sherebi was from Beis David. A daughter who came from David's brother was not proper to marry the son of Rebbe. She wasn't the daughter of kings. In other words, uh, Rebbe's son should have only married in the dynasty, in the um, in the royal family. And she wasn't from the royal family. That's how Rashi learns. And Maral asks, what do you mean? Everybody that Rebbe's, Rebbe, all of Rebbe's progeny only married within that family and was Shimi such a bad shidduch? I mean, uh, it's David's brother. You know, was it so bad? Maral says, I mean, different than Rashi. He learns that no, that they checked into and they found that nothing was wrong in the Yichas. There was nothing wrong with the Shidduch. So the girl must have just died because of her own, uh, for her own reasons, or whatever, whatever her time was up or she did some sin or whatever. She died of her own. It wasn't because of the Shidduch. That's how the Maral learns. All right. Anyway, um, so what happened after Rebbe's son couldn't marry this girl because the Kala died? Azul Yasla Bray by Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Zimmer. So he went to make a shidduch for his son in the house of Yosef ben Zimmer to marry Yosef ben Zimmer's daughter. Paskule, and they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. You know, there was uh, like they would give, you know, cast, they would give a dowry, but they would also uh, say, how long will support him in learning, right? They give cast, the you know, yeshiva. So Paskule, Tarti Sarishanan, right? They said, okay, first you'll go learn for 12 years in the yeshiva before the marriage, right? First we said, first you're going to learn for 12 years before the marriage. But, you know, he's entitled to see the girl by the shidduch, you know, uh, so he went there to see the girl. He saw the girl in front of him, you know, the girl, the cow passed. I'll tell you what, guys, let's make it six years. I, I don't want to wait 12 years to marry her. She's pretty good looking, you know, let's, uh, how about six years? Can we cut that in half? And then she passed by another time because she walked to and fro, right? Um, yeah, all right. I'll tell you what, let me marry her now and then I'll go to the yeshiva. Let's, let's, what's with this 12 years and six years? I'd like to get married right now, if you don't mind, and uh, then I'll go to yeshiva. He was embarrassed from his father because he showed that, you know, you know he was more interested in, in getting married to her than in going to the yeshiva. So he was a little embarrassed. So his father, Rebbe, said, no, but don't be embarrassed at all. You have the, the das, you have the same mind as your kona, you're the one who, who acquired you, meaning a bonus lolem, yesh bach, yesh bach, you have why? Mikar ksiv, originally Hashem said, tibiyema, I'll bring them into Eretz Yisrael, but see tomorrow I'll plant them there, right? Tibiyema, but see tomorrow, ha'na chalas cha, machol neshiftacha, I'm going to plant them there, and then I'm going to make a machol neshiftacha, I'm going to make a proper abode for you, meaning I'll build the base of Mikdash later on, right? Tibiyema, but see tomorrow, ha'na chalas cha, 
Yachach, and then they'll build a base of Migdash. In other words, first come into the land, and then we'll, Hashem will join them, we'll make a union. The base of Migdash is a sign of the union with Hashem and B'nai Yisrael. So at the end it says, Make me a Mishkan even in the Midbar. Not waiting until we get to Eretz Yisrael. I'm not going to wait to make the union. I'm going to do the union right here in the Midbar. So you also, originally you were supposed to marry her later on after learning, but you can marry her first. Also, Yosef Tartishani, the Bey Rav. But then what did he do? He went to learn in the yeshiva. It's not clear what happened. Maybe, maybe he did consummate the marriage first, but he went to learn in the yeshiva for 12 years, the Bey Rav. When he came back, she was barren. And Rashi says, Nasa Zakara came there as a shalom global. It's possible that you know Rebbe uh, told the son, you're doing the right thing. We can marry her first and then go in Yeshiva. He got married. I guess they had Sheva Brachas, and then he went to Yeshiva for 12 years. She was without her husband for 12 years. And sometimes without when if she's not having Bia for 12 years, uh, or Rashi says uh Esr Shanam, even 10 years, um, she was barren. Amara, Amar Rebbe, what should we do now? No children. What should we do? Nigra Shashuri divorce her. Yomru, people say, Ania Zu Lashav Shimra. What do you say? This poor girl waited for him for 12 years and now he comes home and he divorces her. How does that look? Ninsabis Sakhar Shri take another wife. Yom people say, Oh, Zu is that's his wife that he's procreating with the and also, and that's his uh, harlot, right? That's his prostitute. That's also improper. Boila Rachmi, so Rebbe prayed for her this dies, and she became, she was uh, she recovered. And uh, she was no longer barren. She was able to have children. Some these are now we have a bunch of famous stories. Those are good stories. There is even more famous stories. He went to the yeshiva at the end of the sheva brachas, the end of the wedding, uh, the wedding week of Shimon Yochai. So it was the last few days of the of the sheva brachas. So Shimon Yochai said to him, "Amalei Yaakovli Adosu Medach." Wait, and I'll wait till I come with you. Rabbi Shimon Yochai, this is Rabbi Shimon Yochai said, wait, don't go to the yeshiva yet. Wait, I'll come with you. Lo he didn't want to wait till the end of the Shabbat because he went to the yeshiva right away. You see a big lesson for me about learning. Better not to wait. Don't wait. Take care of it right now. It's a good lesson for everything. Get, you know, something has got to be done. You know, they say, you know, getin and gemach, do it right now. So he didn't wait for him. He went to the yeshiva. Azul Yosef, Trey Sari, Shani, Babay, Bat Rav. He learned for 12 years in the yeshiva. That was the common, I guess that was the common, uh, you know, uh, period of time that they learned. Right? Ada when he came home, the Masa. They had changed the routes, the, the roads in his city were all changed. You know, we, we were all changed. Somebody once said to me, I can go reclaim uh, the, the, the small little property that my grandfather had in a little shtetl. It's probably not worth much anyway. So I, I paid some guy you know, some lawyer who, uh, with a kippa who spoke Polish, you know, he's Polish, and, and, and he's going to check it out, you know. So the first step was they found that the whole city, so to speak, was raised, and all the roads were different, and then you need all kinds of, uh, um, you know, map uh, experts, and they, I forgot what even what these guys are called, they're able to figure out where it was. And that's another $15,000, you know, like, you know, they're always, they're always looking for something anyway. So here also, the roads changed. He couldn't find his house. He didn't know how to go home, and he didn't have ways. He didn't know how to get home. Also, Yosef so he didn't know what to do. You know, there are no phones. How do you find out? He doesn't know where his house is. He doesn't know how to get anywhere. Also, Yosef Agudinar, so he sat on the bank of the river. Shemala, he really said he saw that there was a young girl there, Davukarle, they called her Bas Chachinoi, his daughter. In other words, he had lived at home, he had children, and he had children. And he called, they called her Bas Chachinoi, Bas Chachinoi. Oh, you daughter of Chachinoi, Mali Kamasach, fill up your pitches, but turn that on, let's go. Oh, this must be from, this one must be my daughter. It was granddaughter, but you know, it was uh, this was from this mouse. Azabas Rasa, he followed her home. I guess he didn't want to tell the girl that I'm your father. Maybe you're going to scare her. I don't know, but he followed her home. Or maybe he did tell her. Aviasiva, this, his wife was sitting. Kanala came because she was sifting the flour. Dolaina, she lifted up her eyes, Chazise, and she saw him, and Savi Liba, uh, she had a faint heart. In other words, she basically had like a, you know, she had like a heart attack, Parach and she stopped breathing. And, uh, you know, her, her, she, like she had a heart attack. She was so amazed. You know, the shock just showed up out of nowhere. 
This poor woman who waited for me while I was learning for 12 years, this is her reward that she's going to die. Boy, Rachme, Allah, he prayed for her, Bechaya, and she lived. Rav Chama Bar Bisa, now another similar story. Rav Chama Bar Bisa knew the story of Rav Hananya ben Chachinoi. So, he also went to learn 12 years in the yeshiva. He also, when he came home, Omar, he said, Lo avid kid, avid, but I'm not going to do like he did. He scared his wife to death, and then he had to, uh, he had to uh, revive her. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I owe Yosef he says, I'll tell you what, I'll go, I'll send word, I'll send word that I'm coming home. So, I owe Yosef Medrashah. So, he went and he, lay, he sat at home, and he, he went to the base Medrash. He didn't want to just you know, show up and give her a shock. So he went into the base medrash, right? Shalach um, base, and he sent word to his house that uh, he's 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 in town. He'll be coming up. That you know, be coming home. Don't don't be uh, don't be surprised. I'm in town. Shalach base. Meanwhile, Asar of Oshiabre. Meanwhile, his son, that was his son, who he didn't recognize because he hadn't been home for twelve years. Rav Oshia was the son of this Rav Chama Bar, uh, Rebbe Chama Bar Bisa. So Rav Oshia, uh, Yosef Kamei was sitting in front of him in the base medrash. He was also a Tam Chavim Rebbe. He was asking him and learning. So he saw that, oh, this kid knows how to learn. This, this guy knows how to learn. He's a young man. He really can learn. So now, Rav, uh, this Rav, Rabbi Chama Barbisa felt very bad. Omar, not recognizing that that was his son, he said, boy, look at this kid. Look at this young man. Look at how he's learned. Yeah, had I not gone away to the yeshiva and I stayed home and taking care of my children, yeah, I would have a child like this, not knowing that that was a child. The son didn't recognize the father, the father didn't recognize the son. Just talking and learning. A guy comes into the yeshiva and he asks him, shall he talk and learning? Boy, if I would have stayed home, I, would, I could have had a son like this. Um, Clearly, there's a yeshiva in town that the father didn't go to. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Right? Or he learned from some Rebbe. Uh, now he came home. Again, they didn't rec- they didn't recognize each other. Later on, after I guess after he was in the in Beis Yisrael, he came into his house, all gray, and the son walked in. He didn't know that it was a son, so he thought this kid came back to ask him another question. Come, come, he got up. Oh, he wants to ask me a learning at Tamachof, and he wants to ask him questions. Who saw the Michelle Ishmaita Kaboy? He thought that he wants to be coming in to ask him a shayla. He didn't realize that it's that it's his own house and that it's his son's house. I'm like this was his wife said to him, "Me, God, with the come back, come, brought." What's going on over here? Who, where is there a father who gets up for the son? The son should get up for the father. Why is the father getting up for the son? So then, of course, they rejoiced in happiness as they recognized, as they realized who they are, and the whole family was happy. Karile Rami Bar Chama. Notice this is not the same Chama. This is, we're talking about Rabbi Chama Atana, lived at the time of Rabbi, Rabbi Chama Bar Bisa. Who had a son, Ravosha? This, uh, this good, this good Tamachachim son is Ravosha. So it was Ravosha, the son of Rabchama, the son of Bisa. Rami Barchama, who lived hundreds of years later, it's a different uh, uh, Chama there. It's not Rebbe Chama, it's Bar Chama. Achot uh, Mishol Shlov the famous pasuk that the the three um, the three threaded um, uh, thread, the thread that's uh, that has. Uh, there's like three threads that's strong, lob Mary not take, you know, the twisted three times will not tear quickly. What does it refer to? Zeravoshia, but also Barbisa. And it's a famous call that if you have three generations of learning of Torah, that it won't it won't quickly uh, disappear. And here's an example: Ravoshia, the son of Rafama, the son of Abisa. So this is a good story. Nobody died over here, nobody had a heart attack, but it was it was done. He learned from the other one. Now, now that tells now we'll start the story. Just to finish it off, we'll start the story of Rabbi Kiva. We'll finish it tomorrow. Rabbi Kiva, Ray the Ben Kavos. Rabbi Kiva was the shepherd of this. Is the famous story that we all know. Every kid knows the story. It was the shepherd of Ben Kalbas of Ua. Why was he called Ben Kalbas of Ua? Because every person who came, he was a very wealthy man. Every person who came in as hungry as a dog, Kalba would leave. Savua would leave satiated. Where any person who came to his house hungry as a dog would leave full. He saw that uh, this uh, Rabbi Kiva saw that his daughter, the daughter of Kal Savua, even though she came from a very wealthy family, she was very uh, modest, uh, Umali, and very a uh, good person, like a good Amidas. Umrale, she told him one day, if I get married to you, will you go and learn the yeshiva? I'll go to the yeshiva. And they got married to Tzina. They, um, what would you say today? What do you call that? They eloped. 
they eloped, but there was eight of them, I'm sure. They got married probably, but the father didn't know about it because the father didn't want his beautiful, you know, well-groomed daughter to marry this lowly shepherd. The Shadra say, and uh, the Shadra say, and uh, she sent him away to yeshiva, right? She sent him away to yeshiva, and that was it. Shama Avua, the father heard about it. You know, they got married with Sina, the Shadra say, well, they went away, he went to yeshiva, the father heard about it. Afim Beisai threw her out of the house, and Adra Nami Nechsei, and, and forswore her from having any assets, uh, any of his assets, she couldn't have any pleasure. Also, Yosef Tresari Shan and Bayrav, he went to learn the yeshiva for 12 years, and uh, Kiyosa, when he came home, Aisi by day, Tresari, Alfe, Tamiri brought him 12,000 students. Shamelu Saba, as he came home, he heard an old man, the Kamala, told his wife, he, tell, he saw an old man telling his wife, how long are you going to continue leading a life of almanos time of a, a living widowhood? That's what you're living. You're living like a widow. You're alive and you're a widow because your husband's away. she said, if he would listen to me, my husband would listen to me. Yosef he would go back another 12 years, and that's Taka what he did. And Rakiva said, Amar Bashus Kavdina. Ah, she agrees. Hara Azal. So he went back. He asked me to live another 20, another 12 years of Shiva, the famous story. And then he came home with 24,000 students. And we'll continue the story tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem. Have a good day, everybody. Culture. Oh,